Hi everybody. Hi, my name is Lou Scott and I work at Proof Encounter as their Head of Fundraising. We are so sorry that you were unable to attend our very first Cook Live event hosted by the incredibly talented chef Ed Chef. But thank you so much for making a donation to receive this pre-recorded version. So Ed, Ed has worked at some fabulous places. He's worked at the likes of the Ivy in London, at Claridge's, and he's even owned his own restaurant, One Blenheim Terrace in St John's Wood. So whether you're sitting there as a really confident chef or sitting there thinking, I'm really not sure what I'm going to be doing for the next hour or so, rest assured you are in absolutely very capable hands. Many of you watching may have supported Grief Encounter since the very beginning, 16 years ago. Others may have joined us along our journey, or you may be a brand new supporter of the charity. Either way, we hope that you will continue to support us as we move forward, enabling us to reach all the bereaved children and families that need our help. The last few months during lockdown have undoubtedly been the toughest that the charity have ever endured. But our clinical team and our counsellors have not stopped supporting the children and families who need us. We have adapted our face-to-face -face family programme and transferred it onto online sessions. And our Grief Talk helpline has not stopped supporting people. Many calls that we've received have been as a consequence of COVID-19. And this team work hard every single day to support people across the country who are ex facing extreme grief and trauma as a consequence of this pandemic. Every single one of your 26 pound donations enable us to provide another Grief Talk bereavement session for those experiencing the death of a loved one. Thank you so, so much for all of your donations. If anyone during this cookery demonstration would like to make another donation, please can I ask you to go to our website. We do rely entirely on voluntary donations and your support is appreciated now more than ever. We cannot thank you enough. So, I hope you're all ready to go. Feel free to make a mess, laugh, go wild, whatever you need to do. But above all, please, please have a fabulous time. So, without further ado, I'd like to hand you over to the main man. Take it away, Ed. Thanks Lou for the amazing introduction and thanks everyone for joining tonight for such a great cause. Um, I'm going to answer questions as Lou mentioned on cook help as we're cooking along. If it's too fast, if it's too slow, there will be opportunity for everyone. Mm -hmm. There will be opportunity um, for everyone to ask questions as we're going. Um, this is my sous chef tonight, Amy. So she's done every food demo with me so far. Fantastic chef. Um, so we're going to get going. We're going to also just mention, as Lou said as well, if you text COOK to 70660, um, please donate as we go along if you can. I know everyone's donated to be here already. Every time I mention it, I'm also going to donate and I've got a tally mark, so I'm on number one. Um, and I promise you that. So we're going to get started and we're going to start with dessert first, because once that's made, you can enjoy your starter main course and then you put your dessert in the oven and when you're ready, you can eat dessert. So I've got the ingredients down here for the dessert. So we have got the caster sugar, margarine, or you can use butter, we're, we're using margarine. We've got the eggs, the cocoa powder, the salt and the vanilla and flour. So it's a really simple recipe, the dessert. I'm hoping everyone's with me so far. Um, dessert's really, really simple. We use this a lot of feast, um, for catering, we use it for wedding, for mitzvahs, 
whatever the occasion, it's a great simple um, recipe for a dessert. So we're going to start with the margarine, or if you're using butter, you can use butter. And we're going to put that into the pan. It's melted because it's the hottest day ever. In fact, it's so hot that today is the first time this year it hasn't rained in Manchester, which is incredible. Um, my wife would tell me off for any Man Mancunian jokes. So we've got the margarine and the sugar going into the pan. And we're just going to take that over to the stove. And we just want to gently melt the two together. Sugar and fat, any sort of fat, whether it's oil or butter, will never ever, um, sugar will never dissolve in fat. So all we're really doing is melting the marge more than it's already melted naturally. Um, and we're just going to stir the sugar in. I'm hoping everyone's with me. <laughs> I'm looking out for messages, but I think we're good so far. So as I say, it's the easiest chocolate. You can use this as a chocolate brownie. If you overcook it, you can cool it down and use it as a chocolate brownie. But you can see the two just come together, but it's still grainy because the sugar will not melt into the fat at all. It won't dissolve properly, I should say. Right, we're going to take that off the heat. It's as simple as that. And then all we're going to do, we're going to throw all the other ingredients in together. Um, leaving the eggs till last because we want it to cool slightly. So, can I just tip that in names? So, we've got vanilla going in, we've got salt, all the salt, it's all weighed out. I'm hoping everyone's weighed out, it just makes it a lot quicker. We've got cocoa powder going in, I'll do that one. Okay, so we've got the cocoa powder, we're going to put the flour in as well. I'll take that in, all of it. Okay. So at least just going to mix that quickly. And then we're going to leave the eggs till last when it's um, slightly cooled. It's still oh. going to be warm. Sorry, one minute. Um, and we're going to pour the eggs in. So we've got. Please slow down. Okay. I will slow down and I will recap as well. Yeah, one minute let me right. just do this. So can you just repeat what you've done? Yeah, so all we've done is we've melted the margarine and the sugar together on the stove for literally a minute if that. We then add in the um, vanilla essence, the salt, the flour, the cocoa powder. So it's up to that point, it's every ingredient apart from the egg. And the egg we're mixing in now. And you should have a really nice silky... Um, I mean, you can do it with a whisk, you can just use a spoon. You'll have a really nice, silky, shiny chocolate. I don't know if you can see properly, but it's a nice, silky consistency. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to do this. Yeah. And all we're going to do with... Sorry, I'm just... I'm hoping everyone's with me. Okay, so also I should say with the recipes, there's only me and my wife eating dinner tonight. So we've halved the recipes. All the recipes that we did um, serve four people. So hence I've used one egg instead of two. I've halved every, every single recipe tonight. Um, and all you're going to do with this mix is fill two ramekins. When I say fill, like just over halfway, they will, um, the egg in there will make them rise a little bit. Okay, so we just want to evenly try and split that. Um, what we're going to do with these, it's worth making a note if possible, is they cook at 180, sorry, 170 degrees for 18 minutes. There's no, there's no water in the bain marie, it's just an empty tray. Um, we cook them at 170 degrees for 18 minutes and then you leave them for six minutes out of the oven just so that they rest and they will be really nice and gooey in the middle. What I will do, I'm going to cook mine so that you can see what they look like when they come out. But really what I would say to you is when you're eating your main course, if you want to turn your oven on, pop it in the oven at that point and the time you finish your main course, you can enjoy desserts as well tonight. So I'm going to pop mine in for 18 minutes. Mm. 
Put the timer on. And that's dessert made. So I'm going to give people a few minutes to sort of catch up. I'm going to have a bit of a clean up and I'll answer any questions anyone has um, regarding dessert. So that's dessert finish, hopefully. Let's have a look on the questions. There's no questions, so I'm assuming everyone's got this. No, no, but you don't need to butter the ramekins at all. So I will type on the text there. People ask the same question. Um, you're not going to turn these puddings out of the ramekins. You're going to serve them in the ramekins as a hot chocolate pudding that's melted in the middle. Yes, if you wanted to turn them out, if you wanted to butter and flour the ramekins first, um, the puddings will come out. You need to let them rest for the six minutes. Otherwise, they would be a complete mess on the plate, especially if you try and turn them out. Um, someone said um, can you cook them so smart? So yeah, you can reheat them. So ideally, if you're going to reheat them, you're best to leave the batter in the ramekins, put them in the fridge and cook them fresh tomorrow. If you take them out of the fridge, just so they're room temperature and not fridge cold for maybe 20 minutes, um, then you can cook them and they'll be fine tomorrow. They also freeze really well. If you want to freeze them in the ramekins, that's absolutely fine. Someone also said, is it 170 degrees? It's fat, yeah, sorry, it's 170 degrees Celsius in a fan-assisted oven. Um, so, yeah, 170 degrees Celsius, 18-minute cook time. Mine are in now on a timer and um, six minutes rest outside of the oven as well. Do you cook them before you freeze? Um, sorry, if you're going to... Oh. Sorry. If you're going to freeze them, I wouldn't cook them first. Just freeze the batter in the ramekins. I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes for people to catch up. Everyone still looks a little bit busy. And then we're going to move on to the starter. Okay, I'm going to do one last recap on this. So into your pan, you have the margarine or butter with sugar. You melt that, you add in all the ingredients with the egg being the last one. So that's vanilla, salt, um, sugar, flour, sorry, not sugar, that was already in, flour, cocoa powder, and finish with the egg. Give it a good mix together, pour it in the ramekins, um, 18 minutes, 170 degrees Celsius, take out for six minutes and eat them whilst they're hot. She said, how did you add the eggs? The eggs you literally just stir in. So beat the egg first, pour it in, stir it in, and cook. And please, 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 I'm going to top up my tally, but please donate Cook to seven, oh, I better get this right, 70660. Um, please donate, and that gives £10 to Briefing Council. Let me know, maybe a thumbs up if you're ready. Any th yeah, someone's having a cup of tea, I think. Well ahead of the game, or it could be a gin and tonic, I don't know. It's one of those nights. Okay. If it's okay, we're going to move on and we're going to make the, oh no, that I right. We were going to make the starter. There's one thing that we want to do off the main course to start with. So, Linz, if you're following me. Oh, the chicken is the fish. Yeah, it's fine. Fine, so what we're going to do is, from your main course, we just want to get the chicken poaching. So, it's not a hot salad, it's a warm salad. So, all we're going to do is, you and Sorry, I'm going to try and put a glove on. How many days? How many days? Chocolate mix just stay in the fridge. The fridge, can, uh, the chocolate mix in the fridge will last up to five days. I've got one large, as I say, I'm only doing half the recipe. It's for two people. I've got a large chicken breast with the fillet still in. It's absolutely fine. No skin, no bone. So we've got the chicken in the pan, get rid of that in my glove. And all we're going to do with this chicken, I've got some chicken stock here. It's most important is the chicken is definitely covered. So I've got some chicken stock and I've got the coconut milk. 
You can use reduced fat coconut milk, it doesn't matter. So the chicken's now covered in there. And just as some flavor, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw in some kaffir lime leaves. On the recipe, they are optional, so you don't need to have them, but they do give a lovely lime, citrusy flavor. And a stick of lemongrass, if you come back to the chopping board lens. With me? So I've got a nice stick of lemongrass. And once again, how much coconut milk? It's just basically it should be 50 50 chicken stock to coconut milk just to cover that chicken. And um, we're just going to bruise the lemongrass. It's too fast. All right, I'm going to slow down. Sorry. Um, and we're just going to roughly chop some of the lemongrass. I mean, half of it is plenty. Okay. Smell it. Smell it. Sorry, John, smell it. <laughs> Ames isn't a fan of it, but the lemongrass is also going to go in. The lemongrass just goes into the pan with the chicken, the coconut, the stock, and the lime leaves. And we're going to turn this on. And we just want this to simmer. So it doesn't need to be a roaring heat. But we just want that to poach. It's going to take about 20 minutes from raw to cooked. Um, it's going to take about 20 minutes. So I'm going to just give you a minute. So just, just to recap one second and look at the questions. If it's one chicken, is it one chicken at a time or all of them? So if you're doing for four, it's basically half a large chicken breast per two people. So I'm cooking for two. So I've got one chicken breast. Definitely, if you're cooking for four, Put two chicken breasts in now, just have a bigger pan, make sure it's covered. And it's 50% coconut milk to chicken stock, a couple of lime leaves, a little bit of lemongrass, and we're just gonna poach that. I'm just gonna check any questions. Yeah, so if you, if you are cooking for four, it's two chicken breasts. Someone's just asking a question. I'm hoping everyone's with me and we've just, Put this onto, um, you look there. We're just putting this onto simmer now. So you can see the chicken breast is just covered, so it don't need tons and tons of liquid. It's run too fast. It's way too fast. All right, I'm slowing down. It is hard to judge. I'm doing my best, I promise. I'm just going to have a quick check on my chocolate. Another 11 minutes on the chocolate. And then I can show you what that will be like when you eat it later tonight. And all I'm going to do... Is do you let the chicken boil or simmer? Simmer. I don't want it... If, it, if you boil... Um, if you boil the chicken, it's going to become tough. So you just want to gently poach it. So it's just simmering. Um, and it, from when it comes to the simmer, it will take around 20 minutes um, for that chicken to okay. cook. Okay? Right. We're we okay to move on. Oh, so we've lost the screen. There we go. Can I get a thumbs up if we can move on? Yeah, cool. Majority of people. If you can grab your starter tray of ingredients now, that would be great. And we're going to make the batter for the sweet corn fritters. It seems a bit disjointed, but this is how cooking tends to be. But at the end of it, we will have three plates of meal at the same time um, as we want. Is the them. chicken covered? The chicken's, uh, there's no lid on the chicken, if that's what you mean. It's covered in liquid, the chicken. Um, just give me one second. Oh. So here, if you want to see the chickens, you see, I might even touch, add a touch more stock into that. Okay, it's, it's there or thereabouts. So a tiny bit more coconut milk as well. Okay, it's just going to start coming to the simmer now. And we're going to start on the starter. Otherwise, we'll be eating at 10 o'clock and we'll be in big trouble. Um, so everything should be weighed out for the starter as well. I, I will go through the ingredients now. So we've got the flour, we've got ground cumin, ground coriander, 
Little touch of salt. I'll show this. What? I did it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, show the ingredients. I've got the water measured out. I've got the beaten egg weighed out. I've got the baking powder. I've got oil, that's for cooking later. I've got one tin, because I'm doing half the recipe for two people, I've got one tin of drained sweet corn and I've got two spring onions. So we're going to make the Someone's batter. Someone's asking about the rice noodles. Rice noodles, we're not cooking yet. Is that the question? No, yeah. the rice noodles you can leave dry. So there's for no the moment. Need. I'll tell you what you can do for the rice noodles is um, you can boil the kettle. We're not going to cook them yet. You can put the kettle on to boil, put a pan of water on. Yeah, right. sure. So okay. Amy's going to help me with the batter. So we have got the flour, the baking powder, make sure it goes in hot, the salt. Just to make it easy, it's all the dry ingredients go in first. Coriander powder, ground coriander. And we have got ground cumin. So all your dry ingredients are now in together. No, I'm going to mix it. So we've got all the dry ingredients into the mixture. Yeah, we're just going to give them a little whisk together. Then I want to add the measured out water. I'm not going to set the We're going to whisk this together in a second. So we've got the water and the eggs, so they're our wet. Ingredients. We're going to make this into a batter. We want to try and get try and get all the lumps out if we can. How much baking powder? So baking powder was should we should have the recipe. We just check. Sorry, I'm just moving over. Um. Baking powder is a quarter teaspoon if you're making for four people. So I'm making for two, tea, uh, two people, it's an eighth of a teaspoon in here of baking powder. Okay, I'm going to, so if you're doing it for four, it's one spring onion per person. So I've got two spring onions here. I'm going to split them Do you down. Can you just add water to the dry mix? Yes, water and egg. So all the wet ingredients are in. The only things not in are the oil for frying, the sweet chilli sauce, the corn, and the spring onions. Spring onions I've just split in half. I'm going to give them a quick rinse just to get rid of any sound or bugs in them. Please, can we recap of what's in here? Yes, so in here we have got Flour, baking powder. Sorry, I'm Oh, here we go. Oh, there's a pole. Oh, well, we've got a pole coming up. I'm going to have a quick recap. Oh, people have given up. up. <laughs> people <laughs> take away. Oh, God. It's not a good place to be. Um, just to recap, we've got flour, baking powder, salt, ground coriander, ground cumin, egg, water, and what we're about to do, we've washed our spring onions. We're going to cut our spring onions. That should be playing more than I think it should be fine. Okay, we're going to cut our spring onions hey, nice and fine. Nice and fine. Nice and fine. Go and get me the white thing. So, as I say, I'm cooking for two people tonight, so we're just going to do two spring onions. Oh, if I didn't have confusion. Oh. Okay, so we're going to put the spring oh. onions into the batter. Okay. Right. Spring onions. I will. I'm going to give a recap. We're going to finish the batter and I'm going to recap. No, it's going to take. The corn goes in as well. So you shouldn't have any. Very hot tonight. Okay, so one sec. We're going to use a spoon. Right, in this batter, we should have all your flour for the starter, baking powder, salt, ground coriander, ground cumin, one egg. Well, I'm doing that's for four people, but egg, water. 
sweet corn spring onions. And that's our batter for our sweet corn fritters made. So I'm gonna leave that to one side for now. We're not ready for, to cook that yet because we want these hot for our starter. We've left it to us. <laughs> So your chi the chicken it. should be simmering away. It's quite runny, is that right? It's runny-ish, so just to have a look at the batter then. The flour will start to thicken the batter, so you, like runny, but get hold together as a fritter. Okay, so we're going to leave that there. Oh, sorry. Right, so we've got the chicken now. As you can see, oh, the chicken's just, just, sort of simmering very gently, okay? So we're gonna leave that, the chicken's not cooked yet. Watch out. Right, we're gonna Right, I'm just gonna wait a few minutes. 2% of people have got takeaway, I'm very upset. Please, 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 if you finish cooking, can you donate? To uh, donate cook to seven zero six six zero. I'm on third. I'm on my third tally now for donate. There you go. It's on the screen as well. Um, I'm going to wait a few minutes. If anyone's got questions, it smells amazing. It smells amazing, but very runny. We we'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat it like it is. <laughs> wait till we cook it at the end. Um, so. Yeah, there we go. Um, Can you show what the batter looks like? Yeah, I'm going to show the batter. If you can see, it will thicken slightly um, and it will make some really nice sort of sweet corn fritters. If, if it's too thick for whatever reason, you can add a touch more water to it um, because otherwise it will be very, very heavy. Um, I know it's got a little bit of baking powder in, but ideally it's loose-ish. I don't really know how to describe it. I suppose porridge-like um, is probably not a bad term for it, but there's plenty of garnish, plenty of corn in there. So I'm going to leave that next to the stove. If it's runny, what should they add? If it's runny, you can add a bit more flour. So if it's too tough and, and dry, you can add some um, more water in. And if it is very, very runny, then you can add a little bit of flour into the, into the batter. It's not a problem. How's everyone doing? Is everyone doing okay? <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> very relaxed. You can't be doing the cooking as well. <laughs> it's like watching yourself on a football screen at the stadium. <laughs> Looks good. Oh. Oh, so my chocolate puddings are ready. Hey, mate. But you have to wait. Let me wait. No, we want to wait six minutes anyway. So you shouldn't have put these in the oven. If, you, if you're just tuning in now and these are coming out, don't worry. What you want with these brownies or, or chocolate puddings, you can see that there's a bit of wobble in the middle. But hence the six minutes they're going to carry on cooking. And we'll end up with a nice gooey chocolate pudding at the end of it. Okay. What's what is that doing? Just a bit. Oh. Oh. Okay, move. Excuse me. Yeah, we move. Yes. Okay. Oh. Are so, you a tidy cook? No, I'm definitely not a tidy cook. Um, but my wife's 31 weeks pregnant, so I'm probably going to have to help with the washing up somewhat. Um, right, Ames, let us move on to the main course now. So we've got the chicken cooking. The chicken will be ready in the next couple of minutes, um, and we'll keep an eye on that. If you want to come over here, Linz. 63%. No. 63% um, all tidy. Everything's under Control. Um, we're going to start with the rice noodles. So we've got nice fine rice noodles. If you've got thicker noodles, not a problem. Just check on the packet how long it says to cook them for. Um, we use this style of vermicelli quite a lot. I know that it cooks in about four minutes. 
So I've got a pan of water on. We're going to put the turn the water up until it's boiling. I'm going to move the chicken over. I'm going to multitask a little bit. Um, okay, so we wait for that to boil. You've got the chicken simmering away. And really, I know it's not ideal, but for us, it's easier just to touch the chicken just to see if it's ready. It's still not quite ready yet. I'm going to turn it over. Spoon. Just to make sure it's cooking evenly. Okay. Pretty with the lime leaves on top. We're just going to keep, keep that going for a couple of minutes. Okay. Yeah, we've got a nice breeze in Manchester now. Not complaining. Um, what are you looking for when you touch a chicken? So with the chicken, we I know it's cooked on the outside, but it's not that springy. I can still feel it's quite soft in the middle. So until it's it becomes harder. As you cook it more with chicken, it becomes harder as a protein. So I don't want it that it's rock hard, but I can feel on the very edge there, it's nice and firm. In the middle there, there's a bit more give to it and it feels a bit looser in the middle. So we're just gonna leave that to carry on ticking over. Yeah, it is a big chicken breast that we've got um, for our dinner tonight. So once again, that's why there's no set time, it depends. Rice noodles, we're using very fine vermicelli. We're going to pop them into the boiling water. Uh, okay, I'll take it all over. Um, just give that a shake. And as I say, they will take about four minutes or so to cook. Okay, so just to recap so far, I will look on the computer and answer any more questions. Um, can you microwave the noodles? If they're already pre-cooked noodles, microwave them. If you've done it before, then do it. I've never done it before in a microwave. What are we doing with the starter batter? It's just some... Starter batter's over here. So I'm going Still... to recap. So far, you should have your chocolate desserts in a ramekin. You should have your starter batter made. So I just said... <laughs> what? Someone's having a beer every time you mention Donate, I think. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Lynn's, Lynn's my wife who's on the phone on the camera so someone's having a beer every time you say donate cook to seven zero six six zero. Cost me another ten pounds. We're on number four now. To forty pounds in. We really, really want to try and get ten thousand pounds tonight. We're not a million miles off. We were nearly at nine thousand at the beginning of this. So another hundred donations throughout this whole thing would be incredible for the charity. It really would. Um, thanks, guys. Right, the chicken should be nearly there, not quite. The noodles are on a timer. And with the noodles, sorry, I was recapping. You've got the chocolate in the ramekin, starter batter, the chicken, and the noodles. And that's everything. Um, if you can get a sieve ready for the noodles, because we're going to serve, we're going to cool these noodles down and serve them chilled. So if you can have a sieve ready as well for when they're ready. I'm hoping every, everyone's with me. The, uh, the chicken's boiling quite fast, just going to turn down the heat so it will overcook and become dry and tough. Then, sorry. A quick look at these noodles. My daughter's telling me there's a minute left on the timer. Best way with these is just to try it. Just waiting. So at the moment they're just a touch too tough and chewy. So we're gonna give them one more minute. So a chef's talk, like a minute really probably means two. When you add butter or fat and you say a tablespoon, it's normally about four. No, 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 I'll leave it off now. So our time is gone. Just going to give it another couple of seconds. Right, Liz, do you want to show the chocolate pudding whilst we're waiting? Mm -hmm. So, chocolate pudding, when you cook it at 170, 170 degrees Celsius, 18 minutes, and we've left it about six minutes now. And as you can see, as we go in here, you've got a lovely self sourcing chocolate pudding. It's Nice and sort of brownie and cake-like, but it's got a really nice sauce in the middle. No, my kids are asking if they can eat it, but <laughs> if you, the longer you leave it, 
no, no, no. Oh. The longer you leave it, the more it's going to set up. So it's still fairly loose. It may be do with another two minutes of just leaving it to, to finish cooking. But you can see where we're at with them. They've risen slightly. They're nice and sort of dense and chewy. But they've got a lovely chocolate sauce with them as well. Right. Noodle time. Oh. So just be careful. Head one back. No, no, it'd be too hot. Um, so we've got the noodles and we're going to run them under cold water. We have your one. Okay. So we've got the noodles just refreshing under freezing cold water. We want to stop the cooking and we want to serve this salad um, sort of cold, so like warm to cold. It doesn't want to be hot. So we're going to leave those just to drain. Oh. Leave those to drain. Right, I'm happy with the chicken now. So I'm just going to turn the chicken off and leave it in the pan. Um, this is where I need you to be a bit brave and to be chefs and just make sure that you feel that your chicken is nice and firm and it's cooked. If you've cooked for the same time as me, it re this really was a really large chicken breast. So if you're worried it's very big, I would say we're there now with it. If it's smaller, you can turn it off, definitely. Um, we don't want to serve anyone raw chicken. Okay, Linz, let's do this. Mm -hmm. We are going to... Oh. Can you make the, can you make can you make the batter today? Which batter is this? The batter for sweet corn today and fry them tomorrow. Yeah, perfect. Put it in the fridge. It was set nicely overnight. That's great. Someone's got long cooking noodles. It's okay. So there's no rush. Keep if you've got a long cooked noodle and it takes sort of 14, 15 minutes, it's fine. Keep it cooking. There oh, is no oh rush. God. Oh God. Sorry, everyone. Oh, I'm back. Are we back on. Yeah. Fine. Shh. I think that was Luke cooking. Hello. <laughs> you with me? Everyone looks so calm. No one's hot like us. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I'm not meaning to sweat into the food. It's just a particularly hot day today. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> right. We're gonna... Can you freeze the, cook, the cook fritters? You can freeze the fritters once you've fried them. So if you want to freeze them, you can fry and then freeze them. Oh, that's the lady from... Um... Google bot, Google bot. <laughs> <laughs> right, Linz, we're going to make the dressing. Um, we're going to make the dressing now for the main course salad. So we're going to start with some ginger. All of the ingredients and um, weight of the ingredients should be on the instructions you were given. So we're going to start with some nice fresh ginger. I don't need that whole piece. Is the, ch is the chicken done if it's white inside? Yes, the chicken's white and not pink, sort of raw in the middle, then you're good to go. So much, someone said you remove the um, chicken from the broth. No, you can just leave the chicken in there. If you pull a piece of protein out of a hot liquid, it will go quite tough and chewy. So if you just leave it for a few minutes to cool in there to finish cooking, that'd be lovely. Okay, we have got ginger and garlic start of our dressing. We have got some red chilli. Once again, if you like it really spicy, you can add more. As I say, I'm cooking for two people tonight, not four, so I'm just going to use half of the red chilli. They're quite spicy. Um, my wife doesn't love spice, but I do, so we compromise. That's what we do. That's why we're both so happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's laughing because she knows how much true that is. <laughs> um, I often tell people I'm selfishly married. I'm happy and she isn't. So we're going to, <laughs> we're going to finely chop this red chilli. Um, you can take your time with it, just watch your fingers. But you just want a nice, um, sort of smallish dice of the red chilli. Any questions? Can you go slower? Yeah, sorry. I will recap. So if I do go too fast, I apologise. I will recap. So in here we have got grated ginger, grated garlic, and chopped chilli. No, you're not doing the garlic yet. Yeah, garlic. Oh, sorry, sorry. 
Nice to know you're paying attention. Um, Ames, go and pour the soy sauce in. And the brown sugar, please. Yeah. Brown sugar this is a good time. I don't know if we can we can spotlight him, but it's a good time to wish Eric Salomon a very, very happy birthday. Thank you for spending <laughs> the evening with us. I hope you're not cooking your birthday meal, but you might be. But um, I hope you enjoy and I wish you a very happy birthday from everyone at Grief Encounter as well. So we have got in here, we've got the ginger, the chilli, the garlic, the soy sauce and the brown sugar. Now and what we're going to do, Lens, follow me. Okay, just make sure your noodles are fairly dry. And we want, because the noodles don't have much flavour, we want them to start sucking in all of the flavour from the dressing. So, a couple of spoons. Can you do it? Can you do it? what you want? Sorry, my four year old's not. Do you happy. take chicken off the heat? Yeah, the chicken's off completely now. It's just in the pan. In the sauce, Jojo. Go take my phone. I'll tell you what, I'm going to bribe my children. Oh. Here, that's, that's Jojo. My, Jojo, Ames, right, two of you go and sit inside for a minute and you can eat the chocolate pudding. Here. That was mine, sure. Go on, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, you will do. You'll come back. You got it? Okay. That was my insurance policy. <laughs> I love it when insurance pays out. Um, Fine, so we've got the noodles in here, and we're going to start with the garnish. So Do you put all the dressing on the noodles? All the dressing's on there, apart from the orange, which we're going to squeeze over. So I'm going to recap on what's in this bowl at the moment, get all of that orange in there. We have got the soy sauce and brown sugar, the ginger, garlic and chilli, the cooked noodles, and half of an orange. Oh, Ames, <laughs> give me that back. Right, go look after Joey for me, okay? <laughs> okay, you'll help me in a minute. Sorry, guys. Right, here we go. She's back, and we're gonna carry on. Sorry, everyone. Right. Okay, so, we've got carrots. I've put two carrots. Um, I've got two carrots on the recipe for four people. I've got particularly small carrots tonight, so I'm gonna use a few. Lens on the carrot, please. So we're going to peel the carrots down. All right, so we're going to peel the carrots. Right, and then all we're going to do is carry on peeling the carrots, now the skin's removed, into our salad bowl. So in with the noodles. And we're going to build... You would have said what to do with the orange. The orange just squeeze straight in over the noodles. It's going to add some acids and uh, sort of citrus, nice sweet flavours as well to that dressing. So we're going to peel the carrots. Got one there, got another carrot. We're going to peel them straight into the bowl. Just keep peeling down to the core. Get a speed peeler. If you want to cut them on an angle, if you want to dice them, you can do whatever, it's just going to add some nice texture and um, sort of flavour and colour to our salad. And have a quick clean down. Okay, so we've got our nice salad, the carrots have gone in with the noodles. And now we're going to take the cucumber. When my daughter comes back she's going to be upset because she wanted to cut the cucumber. Okay, she's coming back. So. All we're going to do with the cucumber, I might as well do it here. Okay, you, you're going to cut it. So we're going to scoop out the seeds. We don't want all of the water in there. Scoop the seeds out. A lot of people are still peeling carrots. It's okay, there's no rush. We will recap, I promise. Right, Let's Ames. Just wait a minute. I'm going to show everyone. So let me just show you what I want. It's not my favourite knife, this one. Um, we're going to cut the cucumber on a nice angle like so. Okay, can you do that? You can do it as thick or as thin as you like. <laughs> Either way, it's perfect. I've got to put it on my hands. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Just getting better at this. <laughs> She's got chocolate on her hands. Hello. 
Hello. <laughs> you made the big time. <laughs> Hi, Ingrid. Hi, Ingrid. <laughs> right. Oh. Just stop one second. Right, so we're going to add some... Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Joey, you must be this one. What are we doing with the fritters? Right, we're not doing anything with the batter for the fritters yet. We want to eat them hot. Ames, go and help him. Ames, take him inside. Right, so the other half of the cucumber I'm going to do quickly. So once again, we're just going to do that on an angle. <laughs> Someone's right. complaining about the washing up. <laughs> yeah, the wash... Okay, Amy, stop it, please. Um, We've got... mm. I shall not swear tonight. <laughs> um, we put the cucumber and the carrots in there. Okay. We want a bit of spring onion. So once again, we're going to top and tail. We're going to split the spring onion. After I've done the spring onion, I'm going to retap for you. So I'm just going to give these a quick wash. Okay. We're going to finely cut the spring onion. These are going to go into the salad. We're going to realise at the end of this we've been on mute the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no refunds. <laughs> right. So this seems like a good time to say that Please, 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 we want to get to £10,000 tonight. It's so, so important. Chicken, right? If anyone hasn't put their chicken in, <laughs> you're going vegetarian. There's no other option. Be vegetarian for the night. So I'll bring it over there. Uh, so we've got the chicken here. Okay, it should be nice and tender, nice and white. Um, and get rid of that. <laughs> Definitely okay, so it's still warm, but it's not boiling, boiling hot, and it's got an amazing flavour now of um, coconut and stock. It lends, if you have a look, it's completely cooked through, like there's no risk of it not being cooked enough. And all we're going to do with that is we're going to slice it. You can tear it, it doesn't matter. You can tear the chicken, you don't have to um, slice it. Sorry, I've got a four-year-old that is not getting any treats tomorrow. Um, okay, so we're just going to slice the chicken up. And as I say, it's a warm salad. It's not hot, it's not cold. It's just a nice warm salad. So the chicken, we're going to put in there as well. Okay, we're going to give it a really nice dress now. She's so down. Sorry. I'm going to recap at this point. So to this point, we've, the desserts are in the ramekin. We know that. The starter batter, let's have a look, is next to the stove, so you can see. Yes. Oh, oh. starter batter's here. Okay, so that's still raw. Smells very fragrant. In this bowl here, we have got the dressing, which consists of the soy sauce, the brown sugar, the chili, the garlic, the ginger, the orange juice. We've got the cooked noodles, we've got these nice ribbons of carrots, we've got spring onion, we've got some thick and some thin cucumber, that's just what we wanted, <laughs> and we've got the poached chicken that poached in chicken stock, coconut milk, tapia lime leaves, lemongrass. So we're nearly there with the salad. So what if you're having it tomorrow, would you leave the chicken out? You can mix it all together, it'd be a delicious meal tomorrow, the flavours will infuse really nicely. So. What we've got, Lynn's here, is it one last mix? Okay. Bit yeah. so what we've got, we're going to take some noodles to start with. And we're going to take the main course. Try this. Shh. Ames, we'll do it after. We'll do it after. Needs to try some. Um, fine, so we're going to get some of the chicken, some of the garnish um, in here too. Oh. And all we're left with on the salad front is we've got the texture. Ames, is it good? Ames is enjoying hot chocolate pudding. <laughs> Perfect. Right, so just to finish this salad, we've got some crispy onions. 
just want to sprinkle them over, be generous with them. Okay, we've got some salted roasted peanuts. So once again, yeah. sprinkle them over, be generous. Um, we're just going to finish this salad with a wedge of lime, or a couple of wedges of lime. That'd be fancy. And you can spray that over the top. Okay, spray one over each one. Say again. I hope everyone's with me. We've got a couple more limes just as garnish. And our nice sort of warm, simple Vietnamese style chicken salad. Lens, do you want to have a look? Please slow down. Okay. So I'm going to have a tidy up and uh, I'm hoping everyone's keeping up ish um, with me. How do you stop the noodles clumping together? So if you dress the noodles in that dressing they shouldn't like they might look a bit clumpy when they're in the sieve as soon as you toss them in that dressing it will help to separate them um if not just get your hands in with some gloves or some spoons and give it a really good mix it shouldn't be too clumpy um and there's our two that's our main course sorted for tonight and we've got one dessert so far for tonight <laughs> <laughs> so the last thing, hello. hello. <laughs> the last oh, look, thing, that's good. That's some serious salads um, serving sort of tosses there. Brilliant. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so our last thing we have to do, we've got a main course. The dessert, as I say, when you eat your main course tonight, set the oven to 170 degrees Celsius, 18 minutes, six minutes rest, and these are good to go. So the only thing missing from tonight's three quick meal is the starter, which we are going to get on with now. February so finished definitely by eight. It's now five to eight. Come on. We've got this, guys. So we've got a pan, big pan on a high heat. We are going to put a touch of oil into the pan. Is the mixed green in with the salad? Is the mixed green in with the salad? I'm not sure what you mean by mixed green. Uh, I'm not sure. Mixed green. Do you mean? Do you mean? Can you use olive oil? The olive oil is perfect. Should we need the um, spring onion? Oh, if it's the spring onion you mean into the salad, then yes. Please, that goes into the salad. Right. Okay, I'm going to get our serving plate ready. Did you squeeze lime over salad as well as a garnet? Yeah, why not? I love lime, I love citrus. Sorry, not my wife's pump. Um, I'm going to get my plates ready now for the starter because we Someone's will be. Going on about mixed green, isn't it? I'm not sure what you mean by mixed green in the salad. The only green. Your mixed green salad at the beginning of the recipe. What's it for? Mixed green salad. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. You're asked to to buy it. Let me have a look on the recipe sheet. Just forgotten. Can't see that. Uh, the only thing I can see is lime leaves on there, but they were for the poached chicken. I can't see any leaves or mixed greens. What we're going to do is quite a nice bit of oil in the pan because we are going to shallow fry these. We've got our plates ready with our sweet chili. So you should be getting ready for dinner now. I promise you, the next few minutes we should be eating. This is the batter for the um, sweet corn fritters. I can't, I can't see the questions. I'm gonna test. Yeah, I'm going to test. Right, Lindsay, do you want to have a, I'm going to have a look at the questions. What's that? Oh, you can put the mixed greens. Yeah, if you've got mixed greens, you can put the sweet corn fritters on them. I'm not sure why I haven't got on my recipe. But what we're going to do is we're going to spoon this batter. And you see, like, people are, were asking the consistency. These are holding together. They're not, I wouldn't say they're thick, they're not thin. They're a nice consistency. So if you 
think yours is too thin, add a pinch more flour. And if they're too um, thick, Does add a touch more water. Does the coconut sauce go in the salad? No. No, coconut, the, the poaching liquor for the chicken makes a lovely soup. If you want to season it up, you can have that as a little soup on the side. But other than that, um, it's not part of the dishes that we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to do... Try and squeeze one more in. Lindsay, you on the pan? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to push these over a touch. Get a couple more in, hopefully. Hope you're hungry, Lens. So literally, when this is when this is finished, um, when these fritters are made, we're ready for dinner. So you know, you, your main course is made for you. That's already done. The chocolate is ready to go into the oven, and this is the batter for your um, sweet corn fritters. And all we want to do is we want really nice colour. So we've got a really nice high heat on here. I'm going to have to put the fan on, otherwise my alarm will go off. Hoping you can still hear me. Is everyone with me? How much batter at a time? Okay. How much batter at a time? I've got enough in the pan here now for two of us, so I've got ten fritters. Uh, I've used fritter mine to do the batter anyway. Um, so we're going to buy fritters each. So yeah, if you've got a big pan, if you've got a small pan, yeah, it makes no difference. But I'm going to flip mine over now. See, there's just a nice starting to get nice and brown. Four year olds ask me where his dessert is. Okay, we turn the fritters over. I'm going to have a quick look if there's any questions. The liquid from the chicken soup, sorry, someone's asking how you make it to the soup. I would put it in a blender and just check it if it needs a little bit more soup. Um, um, so the chicken, sorry, the liquid from the chicken has a little bit more salt, taste it for seasoning, you can even throw a bit of chilli in there, blend it, and it will make a really nice sort of light soup. So then we're going to finish up. We've got even a diamond. Okay, so. Take it all over now to our board. Get rid of one of the salads. We're missing the chocolate pudding. Just to show you, <laughs> that was one we made earlier. <laughs> that is empty. So on my chopping board, you can see we have got a starter that's nice and hot, ready to eat. We've got the warm um, Vietnamese chicken salad with noodles. And we have got the chocolate pudding. Please, 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 I hope you're with me, and I'm going to stay online for the next 10 minutes. Please, please, please donate to 70660. That's the seventh time I'm going to donate tonight. Um, I've got seven tally marks. Please, let's get to over £10,000 for this amazing charity tonight. Um, can I get a thumbs up if you're still with me? Oh, I think we started with 230 families. I think there's six of us left. And there's a few. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Ingrid, you're okay? <laughs> <laughs> She's happy. Guys, as I say, I'm going to stay on the chat now for the next 10 minutes. Um, thank you so, so much um, for taking the time tonight. Um, and just helping such an amazing course. It's been an absolute pleasure working with Brief Encounter, working with Adam from Uptown, who's put all of this together. It's been absolutely incredible. 
Um, so I'm now going to join the chat and answer questions on the chat. But in the meantime, enjoy your dinner, and I'm going to pass you back to Lou just for 30 seconds, and then you can go and eat. Thanks so much, guys. Wow. The smells coming from my kitchen are incredible. I really hope that you all thoroughly enjoyed that. I just wanted to take a moment for us all to say a collective huge thank you to Ed, who has offered his time tonight completely free of charge. Ed, thank you for everything that you've done. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Uptown Events, who have also provided their time free of charge to help us put on this event. Adam, thank you. Um, but my biggest thanks goes to each and every single one of you. Your support is staggering. The messages we've had have been lovely to read and the donations completely overwhelming. We'll share how much we've raised with you as soon as we possibly can. So without further ado, I won't keep you any longer. Just wanted to say a huge thank you, enjoy your dinner and can't wait to see you again properly very, very soon. Take care.